We have had a missed day on our hands this week. The scholars you see in this room are members of the mighty ship, the Envisioner. While on search for ancient treasure, we were marooned on an island, and a key piece of our map went missing. Today, you will see the evidence. We have considered four members, four crew members. Today, you will see the evidence against Dr. Smart and Ship right now. Before we can begin our investigation, we must tend to our injured crew. We crashed on an island and immediately had to apply emergency splints. We put on neck splints, ankle splints, and wrist splints. We, um, emergency splints are used to tell if a doctor has to tell if a bone is broken or not, but doesn't have the material to check. We ended up saving many crew members. Emergency splints are extremely useful and save lives every day. We built model lungs to learn about neothorics. But first, let's learn about what the lung does. Did you know that it isn't the lung that breathes? It's the diaphragm that's underneath of it? <coughs> now I'm going to show you how to make one. But the materials you need is a, one straw, one rubber band, two balloons, one small and one big, a cup, and clay. First, you're going to take the cup and take the scissors and cut a hole in the middle of the cup. Then you're going to make sure that the hole is big enough for the straw. Then, whenever it's big enough, take the part that is on the inside of the cup and stick the small balloon on, then secure with a rubber band. Then take the big balloon and cut off the stem part, and then stretch it out and add it to the bottom. Then take the clay and put it around the straw and on the straw. Make sure it's on the straw or else it'll let out here. We built a model lung to learn about pneumothorax. Uh, the lungs don't actually breathe. It's the diaphragm underneath the lungs that breathes. While the lungs hold air, um, the diaphragm um, uh, blows air throughout the body. In our story, we had to learn about pneumothorax so we can help some of the crew members that had lung problems. After the crash, many of our crewmates and supplies were missing. And since the island was unknown, we decided to build a robot that instead we programmed it to make ambulance. Noises and for light work. After after successfully rescuing the crew, we we went to set our supplies. We found that our supplies was on a different part of the island. To reach to reach it, we we needed to build a bridge. Now now that we have our supplies, we can start the investigation. Yeah. The heart is a great organ. Another way of saying heart is a pump that gets blood through your body and adds air. We all need to keep healthy and stay active. Without doing that, you can get CAD disease and heart failure. But now we'll go over heart attacks. A heart attack is when your heart stops beating properly because it's not getting enough blood. A heart attack is caused by fat called plague getting blocking your artery. When your heart does not receive enough blood, it is damaged. Some symptoms of a heart attack include shortness of breath, sweating, nausea, and indigestion. In fact, over 720,000 people a year get heart attacks. We also dissected, dissected calf hearts, which helped explain what each part of the heart does. For example, the atora in the heart helps distribute blood into different areas. 
And as we said earlier, the heart helps get blood around the body. And blood can be affected by snakes and their venom. Let's, more, let's learn more about that now. There are, two, there are two different types of snake bites, neurotoxic and hemotoxic, both of which do two of the same things. Eventually, it will start to clot and eventually end with a hemorrhage. Here are some symptoms of a neurotoxic bite. Um, temporary blindness, vomiting, minty taste in mouth, and swelling. Of hemotoxic bites are very different. Here are some examples of their symptoms. Troubles breathing, um, sweating, numbness in face and limbs, and many more. That's how we, as, since we know that Doc, Miss Young was not feeling any neurotoxic symptoms, we know that Dr. Smart was lying. This activity is called the blood drop or the blood splatter. The, in this activity, we would drop fake blood from varying heights. We need to do this to figure out why, where the blood could have been dropped from. We need to know this because our suspects had cuts at varying heights. First we would fill a dropper with fake blood and then we would drop the blood onto a sheet of paper. And then fi finally we would measure and the diameter of the blood drop. The results conclude that the, the results conclude that the blood drops were dropped from different heights. The, the results say says that the, the blood was dropped from around 30 inches. Doctor Smart had the cut on his hand. We analyzed some substance to figure out what the mysterious powder was in the crime scene investigation. Uh, when we were done, cornstarch was the mysterious powder, so, so we were done. They had similar, uh, they had similar results. So cornstarch was the mysterious powder, and that is how we figured out the mysterious powder. In our crime scene investigation, we discovered that Dr. Smart would, took the treasure map. We figured this out by analyzing fingerprints. First, we put cocoa powder on top of the fingerprints, and then we put tape over the fingerprints, and last, we put the tape on a white piece of paper to analyze it. Because we know that the cornstarch is the mystery powder, we could then link the cornstarch to Dr. Smart because Dr. Smart was trying to build a cornstarch salve for sunburns. On top of that, the fingerprint analysis led us to matching the fingerprints left at the scene of the crime to Dr. Smart. Based on all the evidence that our STEM, put, that our STEM group put together, we, th we believe that Dr. Smart and Shipwright Neff um, stole the ancient map.